Welcome back to video number two, showing you how to use the free MEP math curriculum that is available to download from the Center for Innovation and in Mathematics Teaching. This is an excellent math program, and it's designed to give your student a deep understanding of mathematics. Now, in the first video, I walked you through the different materials you'll be using, including what you need to download, when you'll use various materials, and how to keep it all organized. In this video, I'm going to show you an example lesson in detail so you can get a feel for how a typical math lesson with your student will flow. Now, please be sure to visit my website, homeschoolworkplans.com, as I have a number of free resources available, including an organization and prep document you can use as a checklist when you're downloading and organizing the curriculum. It'll make your life easier. I also have a grade level supply list and a detailed daily schedule available for free too. So let's dive right in and look at an example lesson in detail. I'm going to try to get sections of this document here up on the screen in a large enough format that hopefully you can read them. But you may also wanna open this specific lesson and look at it while watching this video. In that case, I'm going to be walking you through year two, which is US, um, the United States first grade, uh, lesson 47. And you can of course download that for free on the MEP website. Now, this example I'm gonna walk you through is a first grade math lesson but all the lesson plans, which are in the teacher's guide, are set up essentially the same way for all the primary curriculum available from MEP. So that's preschool through fifth grade. So this example lesson should provide you with a solid understanding of how lessons flow in any of the elementary grade levels. So for this lesson, there are four pages involved. The top two are the lesson plans or teacher's guide pages. And then on the bottom, there's a practice page there on the left. And that is basically a workbook page. And then on the right, I have the practice page answers put up. Now, if you watched the first video, you should be roughly familiar with these different files that you'll have downloaded from the MEP website. Okay, so let's start this example lesson by taking a quick look at the free daily schedule you can download from my website. As you can see here, for first grade, Wednesday of week 12, math lesson 47 is scheduled. And if you're using the free first grade core knowledge curriculum too, your student will also be learning about ancient Egypt and the moon and the history of a major world religion, as well as reading and spelling and penmanship that day. It's a full and exciting day. So the first step will be to access the lesson plan for lesson 47. You'll have either printed those lesson plans and placed them in a binder, or you'll just be accessing the PDF file you downloaded on your laptop or tablet when it's time for a lesson. As you can see here, the lesson plan for this lesson consists of two pages. And I wanna point something out really quickly. MEP math is a fully scripted curriculum. That means it's going to tell you exactly how to present the material to your student, which resources you'll need, what to write on the blackboard or whiteboard, or if you don't have a blackboard or whiteboard, it's okay, you can just use a sheet of paper. Now, because these lessons are presenting the material with the goal of helping your student gain a deep understanding of numbers, this may look different than what you learned in school. I would strongly recommend that you make a habit of carefully reading through each lesson plan the night before. This was life-changing for me as a homeschooling parent once I developed this habit. Make sure you understand what you'll be teaching your student, how it's presented, and which materials you'll need to have handy. Really, doing this will do wonders for how smoothly you're able to work through the lesson with your student the next day. Okay, so having said that, let's start by taking a look at the very top section of the first page. So every lesson has this top section, which is a summary of the different types of activities in this lesson. The letter R there up there, up there at the top stands for review. So you can see here that the review for this lesson is going to be operations without crossing tens, which is a fancy way of saying addition problems that don't involve carrying or regrouping. So like two plus seven, that sort of thing. The letter C here stands for the core lesson. And in this case, that core lesson is going to cover addition and subtraction of one digit numbers to two digit numbers. All right, finally there at the bottom, you'll see the letter E, which stands for extra or extension. And this activity is meant for students who are doing well with the core lesson and can use the extension or challenge of this extra activity. So as you're doing this lesson, if your student does well with the core lesson of the addition and subtraction of one digit numbers to two digit numbers, then you'd spend those few extra minutes with the extension portion showing them addition and subtraction of two digit numbers. Now, if your student isn't ready for that concept, this activity is fully optional. It really is. The core lessons will cover that concept in a later lesson. You're not gonna miss anything by not doing that extension activity during this lesson. Okay, quick note. 
MEP is what is known as a spiral style math curriculum. This means review of previous concepts is built into the lesson on a specific schedule to allow students to fully retain the concepts over time. This is a powerful feature. And so each school day, it's important to do both the review and core activities. And, and I get it, some days don't go well, right? That's just a normal thing when you're a homeschooler. So occasionally you can probably skip the review activities, but I would really recommend you not make a habit out of it. Let's go ahead and take a look at activity number one. The middle column is where you'll see those exact instructions for how to present the activity to your student. And then in the right hand column, you see helpful notes. So let's take a closer look at this activity. For this activity, you're going to be doing sequences relays. And you'll see here that T, it says T says first few terms of a sequence. So T refers to you, the teacher, and then the P or PS refers to pupil or pupils. Okay, so there's instructions here are T says first few terms of sequence, P's continue it to 100. So what you'll be doing as a teacher is saying the first few terms of the sequence that are listed here, and then your student will continue the sequence up to 100. This is what US curriculums call skip counting practice, and it lays the groundwork for learning multiplication. It's really an important thing to know how to do. Okay, so in this example, you can see here that you will say zero, four, 8, 12, and your student will continue the numbers up to 100, so 16, 20, 24, and so on. The instructions say that after each sequence is completed, you should ask the student to tell you what the rule is for the sequence. So in this case, the rule is that it started at 0 and increased by 4. All right, now there are six of these exercises listed here, and you can always break these up throughout the lesson instead of doing them right up at front. But keep in mind that these lessons were designed in a, for use in a classroom setting. And this particular activity is designed to be used by a whole class together. So for one student, you may only need to do two, three, four of these to get adequate practice. So just use your judgment here. Before we move on, let's take a quick look at the notes on the side there. Remember this curriculum, again, was written for a classroom setting. So not everything is going to apply to us as homeschoolers. The notes here though do point out that this is a mental calculation exercise. Okay. Finally, there at the bottom, you'll see the five minutes indicated. This doesn't really mean that much. It's okay. <laughs> this, is, this is meant to tell a classroom teacher that they should only be five minutes into their 45 minute math time slot at this point in the lesson. Now, as a homeschooler though, you're going to take this with a grain of salt. This particular activity may take five minutes, but more often than not, it is much more efficient to give a lesson to one student than it is to give a lesson to 30 students. So generally speaking, a whole MEP math lesson might take a classroom 45 minutes, but it might take 20 to 30 minutes a day as a homeschooler. Um, now, that's not set in stone. As they get up into those upper elementary grades, fourth, fifth grade, you might be looking at a little bit longer lessons. You know, honestly, though, it's probably going to take me longer to walk you through this lesson than it's going to be to actually do the lesson with your student. If you're working with a young student, here's a tip. If your student is maybe five, six, seven years old. You may find it helpful to break up the math lesson into two or three 10 minute sections and complete them throughout the school day versus all at once. I have one child for whom this was a game changer for us and made school so much more doable. So this is a place that as a homeschooler, you have some flexibility. You don't have to do all this whole lesson in one setting. You can break it up into smaller chunks and spread them throughout your school time for the day. Next, let's look at activity number two. So right up at the top, we see that we'll be using the practice book. Here it's referred to as book two, which is practice book two. We'll be using page 47. And right below that, you'll see Q1, which stands for question one or section one of the practice page. Now I've stuck the pa practice page up there on the left hand side just for reference. And that grid with the numbers up at the top, that's the question one section that's being referred to. You'll also see a copy master OHP is mentioned in this case. And the copy master is just a bigger copy of the worksheet or worksheet activity, and it's meant to be used in a classroom. So the whole page is just that numbers grid. So you could use the copy master to demonstrate this activity and then have your student use the worksheet, or you can use the worksheet to explain the activity as well. It's up to you. Now for this activity, the lesson plan is going to walk you through step-by-step step how to explain to your student how to fill out the addition table. 
and you'll see a note in the notes column that points out that a student doesn't need to fill out the whole table at once. That would actually take a while. Um, you'll probably want to spend five or 10 minutes on an activity like this, and you'll really just want to ensure that your student has learned how to use the table, that they understand how to put the, uh, add the two numbers together and put them in the correct box. Now at the bottom of this activity, you'll see one of those extension options. See that over there on the left-hand side? If your student has done well with this activity and clearly understands how to use the addition table, you could use this extra step to have them explain why some of these sums might be more difficult than others. Here's a hint. <laughs> this is where adding two-digit numbers to another two-digit number comes into play. At this level of their education, that is a challenge. All right, next let's look at activity number three. So again, right up at the top, we'll see that we'll be using practice page 47, and this time question or section two. And the lesson plan will have your student work on two rows at a time so they don't get overwhelmed. Now a quick note on activity number four that's at the bottom there. Remember, these lesson plans were designed for a classroom setting and this level of lessons is typically used with six and seven year olds and they tend to be a wiggly bunch. So there are sometimes these interludes built in where the class takes a break to move or to sing or to do something different. This is really smart. Um, as a homeschooler though, you get to decide whether your student needs a break. Now, alternatively, if you're planning to do two short math lessons in a school day instead of one longer lesson, this is a great place to stop that first lesson. Okay, let's move on to activities five and six. For activity number five, the lesson plan will walk you through writing groups of subtraction equations on the blackboard or the whiteboard, um, and your student can either copy them, um, work them out on the board, or you can do the work orally with them where they just orally answer the questions. For activity number six, you'll be going back to the practice page and this time working on question or section three. And this section will practice, you'll, um, your student will practice completing the subtraction equations in two steps. So as you'll see in the notes, you know, you're going to be monitoring their work here and providing them help as needed. When they finish, you'll correct their work and have them rework any correct answers. And a quick reminder that you have those practice answer pages that you can open those PDF files at any time and see the answers if you don't want to rework the problems yourself. Okay, so that activity number six is the last activity that involves the practice page. So at that point, we'll have finished up the practice page for the lesson. All right, moving on to activity seven in the lesson plan. This time you'll be using just um, the blackboard or whiteboard or a piece of paper instead of the practice sheet. The lesson plan will guide you through giving your student the word problem, guiding your student on coming up with a plan to solve the problem. What do we need to do to solve this problem? What do we need to figure out? It'll show you how to diagram out the problem so you have this visual representation and then finding the solution and then checking if it's correct. Now in the notes column, there's also information on using plastic cubes or another math manipulative to demonstrate how this problem can be solved. So you can tackle it multiple ways if that helps your student gain that deeper understanding. And finally, we come to activity number eight. This activity again uses a blackboard or whiteboard or piece of paper, and the lesson plan will guide you through writing out the common Roman numerals and their equivalents. You'll then work with your student as they decipher how to write the numbers 23, 41, 38, and 95 in Roman numerals. And Roman numerals are really fun at this age. Okay, so that's it. That's the end of lesson 47. Now, maybe this seemed like a long lesson with me explaining it to you in detail, but I assure you that once you are familiar with how these lessons flow, you'll become increasingly efficient at this. And a lesson such as this one will likely take 20, 25 minutes to complete. Now, a quick reminder that you can buy yourself a significantly smoother math lesson by making a habit of sitting down and reading the whole lesson carefully the night before so you can take the time to ensure you understand the concepts, how the material is being presented, and you know in advance what materials you might need. All right, that concludes our detailed tour through an example MEP math lesson. Please be sure to download the organization and prep documents on my website. They're free resources. I've gone through the work of getting a lot of this organization and scheduling work done for you, so please use that. Uh, the daily schedule I have up there will tell you what to work on each day. That organization document, is you can use it as a checklist so you can see what to print and how to organize everything. Okay, well, that's it for this video. Best wishes on your homeschooling journey.